Myths usually have some basis in truth, even in the garden. But it's helpful knowing when the truth ends and the myth begins. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. And today, I'll share with you seven big gardening myths. This first gardening myth is pretty common. So common that I've had some viewers of my videos swear at me in the comments and call me some pretty terrible names because they saw that I have my compost bins right by the fence to my neighbor's yard. So I must be a terrible person because the myth is that compost stinks. And the reason I'm a terrible person is because all that terrible smell is drifting over into my neighbor's yard. Well, this does have some basis in truth. If you're not composting correctly, if your pile is too wet, if you have too much nitrogen and the anaerobic bacteria have set in, then yeah, your pile can smell. But if you compost correctly, if you have a good balance of the greens and the browns, and you have an oxygen mix in your pile that brings in the aerobic bacteria, well, then you don't have a bad smell at all. And to help show you that I'm not a terrible person and that my pile doesn't smell because I'm doing it correctly, I got the assistance of my neighbor. Can you smell my compost pile? No. Have you ever smelled a terrible aroma coming from my compost pile? No, we have not. Are my compost an issue for you? Not in the least little bit. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. This next gardening myth is also pretty common, and it also has a basis in truth. The myth is that wilted plants need to be watered. And it's such a common problem that many of us end up killing our plants by overwatering. The basis in truth is there. If the soil is dry, if there's no moisture for the roots to absorb, the plant will wilt. Well, the same thing can happen during very hot summer days. And this is where the problem arises. You have to understand how plants live. They take the moisture from the roots they bring it up through the stems into the leaves and then there's a process of transpiration kind of like the way we breathe where some of that moisture leaves the plant completely normal but during the heat of the day the plant is trying to protect the moisture that it has so it shuts down the cells that are responsible for transpiration the stomata and by shutting down those cells now the liquid is no longer moving up through the plant and it begins to fall back down to the roots. That causes the wilting. Our natural response is to add water to the soil. But if the soil is already moist, there's nothing wrong. It's completely natural. This summer, I took some video of this process in my own garden. During some of the hottest days of the year, my plants were dramatically wilted but the soil was still moist. All I had to do was just wait a few hours until the sun began to set and the temperatures began to fall and all of the plants popped right back. The transpiration resumed, the moisture moved back through the plants and they became rigid, turgid again, back to their normal pattern of growth. This next gardening myth is so common, I have little doubt that you've heard it, and you may still believe it. The myth is that pine needles will acidify your soil. They will lower the pH. Well, there is so much research out there from universities, scientists that are doing soil studies to show that's just not true. There is some basis in truth because when the pine needles are actively growing on the pine trees, they are acidic. But as soon as they dry out and fall to the ground, that acidity is lost. And now they're just organic matter that can help improve our soil. So that's why I'm sitting on this pile of wood chips and pine needles, because I can get it free from a source near me. And I love using it in my garden. 
It's incredibly useful. All of the benefits of mulch can come from pine needles. So I like them in my garden. And this is one of those myths I learned long ago to not worry about and just take advantage of this material. This next myth comes along, I think primarily just because of a misunderstanding about seeds and a lack of knowledge. The myth is that you need to buy new seeds every year. And I can understand the slight basis in truth because you read a seed package like this one and it says packed for 2020. And that might imply that you buy the seeds in the year 2020, you put them in the ground in the year 2020, and then next year you buy a pack of seeds that says packed for 2021. And the seed companies are glad for you to think this because they want you to buy new seeds every year. But the truth is almost all of the seeds that we're using in our gardens will last four years. Three years is a general baseline. Just about all the seeds that you're growing from these seed packets will last for three years when stored in a nice, dry, cool, dark location. There are some seeds like onions, for instance, that really only stay good for about a year. But we're talking about the viability. When you put seeds like this in the ground, you can expect germination rates well above 90%. As the years go by, the germination rate will fall. But you can expect even after many years, and even with onions, that you'll still have viable seed. You'll still be able to get them to grow, and you don't have to buy new packets every single year. This next one is also very common. And pretty complicated when it comes to separating the truth from the myth. And here it is. Legumes will add nitrogen to your soil. No doubt you've heard that and you probably believe it. You might even rotate your crops to add legumes for the purpose of putting extra nitrogen into the soil. And there's a lot of basis of truth to this. Those legumes, like the peas and the beans that we grow in our garden, will take nitrogen from the air. And through a relationship with some very specific soil bacteria, they will fix that nitrogen to nodules on their roots. And here's where the myth begins. From that point on, the plant is using that nitrogen. So if you allow your peas and beans to flower, to set pods, to set seed, well, the plant has used up all of that nitrogen. That's why it was bringing it from the air onto its roots, so it could use the nitrogen. And then when you pull that plant at the end of the season, there's nothing left behind. That's the myth part. Now, the truth you can use to your benefit. So if you do want to use legumes to put nitrogen into your soil, like as a cover crop, what you need to do is cut down the plant before it sets flower, before it sets its seeds. Then that nitrogen will be on those nodules. And if you take that material and work it into your soil, there will be a gain in soil nitrogen. The problem is that's just not the way most of us garden. So by understanding how legumes grow, you might be saving yourself from extra expectations when it comes to legumes. This next myth is one that most of us either have had or will have the personal opportunity to prove it's a myth. The idea is that a landscape fabric or a weed fabric will stop weeds from growing. And the basis of truth comes down to the basic idea. If you smother the soil, you will keep the plants from underneath growing. Well, I have a pretty substantial weed fabric in this strip by my driveway, to the point that nothing underneath it will grow. But here's where the problem comes in and why it's a myth. It doesn't stop plants from growing on top of it. So those rocks or some other type of mulch you put down on top of that fabric will collect dust particles. And those dust particles will build up to the point that when weed seeds blow in, 
now they have a place to grow. So my fabric and my rocks still have all of these weeds that are growing in them. I even have a really nice section where I have some snapdragons growing beautiful flowers, but they're rooted in the soil and the rocks on top of the fabric. There is a place for some of these fabrics, but don't think that they're going to stop weeds or any plant from growing on top of it. When you add plants to your landscape, you should be choosing plants that are suitable for your region and your climate. That's what I do. I have a very dry climate, so as I'm adding plants, I select a lot of drought-tolerant plants. And the myth is that drought-tolerant plants don't require watering. Well, the basis of truth comes from when some of these plants reach maturity and a large size, they have a developed root system and they can survive just on the natural rainfall. Well, when we put them in our landscape as landscape plants and they're still very young, we need to treat them like any other plant. We do need to water them. They're not drought proof, they're drought resistant. And until they can reach the point of maturity, like this plant will be in a few years, I need to water it on a regular basis. All of my drought tolerant plants need to be watered on a regular basis until they can survive for themselves without the supplemental water that I provide. All of these myths are very prevalent. I hope you've learned something in this video. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider sharing it with other gardeners who can benefit. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <laughs>